Good evening, everyone. This is May 1st. Happy May. Cinco de Mayo is coming. That's All right. right. Everybody, <laughs> it's possible for us to do this and record it for everyone else. And everyone else that's watching it recorded, I hope you benefit from it as well. We're going to go ahead and share the screen, and we're going to get started. Tonight, the subject is going to be on making good choices, which is really good because of what we were discussing last week with the uh, structural tension chart. And um, let's, let's make this large. Dorothy, is this going to work for you? Dorothy, does, do you see everything? Yes. Yes? Yes. Oh, good. I couldn't hear you. So um, we, we're, we're in our last week. I'm wishing everybody luck. I, I'm thinking I'll make it. Time will tell. Uh, the challenge officially ends on the 6th. Uh, way out starts on the 4th, but you can go all the way to the 8th, which I intend to because I'm so close. I've got a half a pound to lose, so I think I'm going to be okay. And uh, the official results and winter payout will be May 11th. The, uh, the new one starts on the 14th of May, and that one ends on the 10th of June. So four weeks. That's my birthday, May 11th. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. So, uh, these are our takeaways that we're going to do after we go through our lesson tonight. And in that book that was referred last week, it was called uh, The Willpower Instinct. Mm -hmm. I got it and I've been reading it. And uh, one of the first things that they talk about is the three mantras I will, I won't, and I want. And to me, it's almost like the stop, challenge, choose. And yeah. I would get mine out because I would tell you what my will and my won't and my want is. Maybe I'll get it once we get to these because we always do these after we, uh, and then our standard two. But um, chapter four is what we're going to be covering. Health is all about choice. We talked about when we were doing the structural tension last week about secondary choices, which are actually the actions that you take in order to accomplish your primary choices. And your fundamental choice is whatever it is you're trying to accomplish fundamentally. Um, fundamental choice. Dorothy, would you read that? I'll, I'll try to do it without moving that. Once you make the choice to give up you've made it your business to act in accordance with your goal. You're taking full responsibility for actions rather than letting circumstances drive your decisions. You become the author of your own life story. It's important to accept the fact that no one can do it for you. Others can help with their advice, good wishes, guidance, experience, medical insight, and understanding of human patterns and motivation. But it will always come down to you. If you're thinking, I'll do my best, but it's really someone else's job to see to it that it works, then you haven't made the fundamental choice. Most of us have been raised to react to circumstances. We haven't been taught to believe that we can adapt to fundamental self-generated resolve. But in fact, this is how we take charge of our lives by realizing that no matter the circumstances, no matter the temptation, we can do what we know is right because we've taken a stand for the choice we hold most important. Thank you, Dorothy. Uh, Marsha, uh, bird mom. Okay, how to make a fundamental choice. Right now, whatever your circumstances may be, you can make a profound fundamental choice for optimal health. Begin by asking yourself this question, do I wanna be optimally healthy? Dr. A will ask you, is there anything else in your life as important as optimal health? As you ponder that question, let me give you a little perspective. As you know, for 20 years I have served as a director of surgical intensive care at a large teaching hospital. I didn't know I did that. Uh, uh, the patients I managed would very likely have died without the intense interventional interventional care we provided, the full gamut of Star Wars medical technology, invasive monitoring, potent intravenous medications, vinyls, okay. <laughs> medications, and sophisticated nutritional intervention. These vulnerable patients came from all walks of life, some young, some old, 
but they all knew that at any moment they could die. They shared a universal realization that changed them profoundly, that right now surviving and getting healthy was all that mattered. It was more important to the millionaire than his portfolio. It was more important to the executive than his job promotion. It was more important to the teenager than the new car he had just wrecked. Reality can be so enlightening. In fact, health deserves to be right up there alongside freedom and the pursuit of happiness as our most prized possessions. It is certainly my most prized possession. I want to be healthy to go skiing with my young girls. I want to watch them graduate from college and be able to keep up with whatever they're doing. I want to see them get married and see my grandchildren go to school. I want to sail around the world with my wife, Lori, and I want her to be healthy too. I want these things more than anything I own. And they're all possible as long as I make optimal health my top priority, my fundamental choice. I hope that you too have decided that optimal health is your fundamental choice. Once you've made that choice, you simply need to arrange your primary and secondary choices to make it happen. Dr. Anderson. Thank you, Marsha. You're welcome. So I thought I would share a little bit of Dr. Anderson's life with you. And his family means everything to him. And wow. what he's doing to share with others. His daughter is now going to Florida State. And um, there is a lot of freedom to develop in those healthy habits and live in a life of where everything's not a struggle, that where you control what it is that you eat, what it is that you do, and you actually start living a, a healthy life by desire instead of by design. And your loved ones, those are the ones who benefit the most from it. Lisa. Primary choices for optimal health. The foundations of health. Healthy eating, including vitronutrient support. Healthy weight and a normal waist size. An active lifestyle, including a daily activity program, a walking program, strength conditioning, flexibility, and agility. Recuperative sleep. Relaxation. A microenvironment of health. Well-being, including social activities, limited stress, a sense of purpose and meaning, spiritual health, and personal fulfillment, and a support system. So these are all the components that when you're looking at what it is you need to do in order to achieve optimal health, these would be your uh, foundations for your secondary choices. So the one year, this is a one year goal. This is something just to give you an idea. We did that structural tension chart and you have it. But the current reality, this is someone who's just reached their healthy weight. And, but they want to go for the optimal fitness where they're fit, they have aerobic stamina, 14% body fat, lean muscle, plenty of flexibility, agility, and the ability at 55 to do all the things they could do at 25. Now, that sounds like a pipe dream, but I got to tell you, I see it. I see it at every convention I go to. Don't you, Dorothy? Are you there, Dorothy? Okay, she might have I stepped away. Coughing. I was coughing, so I muted myself. Oh. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, Lisa comes to mind, the first person that cut, Lisa Castro. And uh, so it's to what degree, I never have made that my goal because I've not ever conceived it as a real possibility. But I know that it is. It's just me making up my mind to do what it is that would need to be done to actually do that. Uh, but I don't think I would ever be able to go back to 25 still. Uh, secondary choices, action steps for adding muscle. We all know what those are. Weight resistance, light calisthenics, weight lifting, stretching daily, walking 30 minutes, walking 10 minutes a day for two weeks. Just something that moves you in that direction. And the foundational components are an active lifestyle. You're not going to get there until you get an active lifestyle. And the primary choice would be to add the muscle. So you move from your current reality to what it is that you, uh, you what matters to you most, where, where your ultimate goal is. Did that help anybody with trying to structure that structural tension? So daily choices, will you take the green path to optimal health or the red path to sickness? Over time, your daily choices can support your goals 
a healthy weight, an active lifestyle, or lead you down the path to disease. It's up to you. It's totally up to us. So you see that reaching the healthy weight is the first step. Adding in the fitness is the next step. And when you add fitness in there, you're going to accumulate muscle mass. And then that anti-inflammatory state where you have now uh, worked towards that optimal health. And the other is true, and we've all experienced it, and it's, it's not being sick, but being fatigued, not feeling good, pre disease taking medications to control things, and ultimately where you're going to end up, end up at the end is in the sick, in, in sick. And it's all determined by those daily choices, those healthy habits that we're developing one at a time. So this is the webinar for uh, Wednesday, April 25th, and it is about the power of choice, Chapter 4. What I just did was cover with you the highlights in Chapter 4 of the Habits of Health. If you want to uh, read that yourself, for those that have the book, go ahead. Are you able to see this? Yeah, it's small. Well, I'm going to make it big. But oh. uh, let me make sure oh, that... Uh, I'm not sure that I uh, did the um, sound, and I had not, so that was good. Anybody ever want to remind me of that, please? <laughs> All right, so we're back, and I'm going to do it. Everybody mute themselves. Hey, everybody. Welcome to tonight's. Um, Habits of Health Call. I am Susan Pallas, Certified Optavia Coach, and I am thrilled to be hosting this call tonight. Um, this topic tonight is the power of choice. And this call is for anyone looking to move their health forward, um, our, create optimal health, and our mission is lifelong transformation, one healthy habit at a time. So tonight's call is going to be based on Dr. A's Habits of Health, Chapter 4, and the Companion Guide, Living a Longer, Healthier Life, Chapter 6. And I am thrilled because I've got two great guest hosts with me tonight. I've got um, Amy Head, who is an Optivia coach and a licensed clinical social worker. She's a certified hypnotherapist and an author. Um, she's in the Atlanta area. And uh, author, she's written two books, Go Bold and Insight Parenting with her husband, Kevin. And Amy has won so many awards, Best of Atlanta for Life Coaching, Best of Atlanta for Hypnotherapy. So we're really excited to have her tonight. Also, I'm thrilled to um, bring on Dr. Um, Anna Copeland. Anna is a past senior pastor in the main area. Um, she is a counselor. She's an Optavia coach, and she's a teacher. And uh, she and her husband, um, Ellis, run a, the Copeland Institute, which is a retreat center um, in Colorado near Estes Park. And they actually have health transformation um, retreats based on our habits of health. So I am so excited to be here. The topic is choice and our you know sometimes you're making choices especially around the eating and uh, getting healthy are so challenging we kind of know what to do and then we find ourselves making choices that don't make sense to what we started out intending in the morning so we're, our intention here is to dive deeper get a better understanding of how we make our choices and equip and empower you to make choices that are satisfying meaningful and lead to um, what it is that you really want to create. So I love what choice is, is the freedom to do something or not do something. And the freedom is a really big word for me because when I got, first got started, before I found this program, I wanted um, freedom to eat whatever I want when I wanted to eat it. And of course, the joke was on me because when you um, eat sugary things or don't eat all day, you have no choice at the end of the day. You are, that cookie jumps in your mouth. It is a drive to eat. You lose all power of choice. So it really is about creating, um, how do we set ourselves up for success? Um, and um, so what tends to be the, challenge with making these healthy choices. What really is going on is our biology. You know, we are biologically programmed to store fat and conserve energy. 
So if you gain weight really easily, I want, and, and want to sit on the couch instead of going for a walk, I want you to thank your body. Right now, say, thank you, body. I love you. You're keeping me alive in a famine. But we don't have a famine. Oh, well. So we might need to be, we were born blessed with as a brain that can really take us out of our instincts for survival. And we're really looking to thrive. So how do we go about thriving? Um, and um, oh, one more thing that, was, that gets in our way, conflicting choices. You know, sometimes we um, really, if we want one thing, it's easy to make a choice. But what if we want two things? What if we want to get up and exercise in the morning or hit snooze? What if we want um, to eat a lean and green because we're feeling good and have energy or eat pizza with our friends? You know what everybody else is doing. So there's so many conflicting choices that we've really got to dial in and figure out what choices matter most to us. So Amy, I want to turn it to you because you had a conflicting um, choice with a donut. Yeah. <laughs> I did, Susan. Thank you. And hey, everybody, it's great to be with you guys tonight. Thank you so much, Susan. I was sharing with Susan that um, last Wednesday morning, I had a really, really great workout that involved a one mile run. And I am not a runner at all. And I always dread the workouts that have running, but I actually, I ended up doing really well last Wednesday morning and I felt so great. When I left the gym, I had to get gas and there's a gas station right across from the gym. But if I drive two miles closer to my house, there's a gas station that has a donut shop right next to it. So I decided I wanted to go there because I was feeling awesome. I was hungry. I wanted to grab a donut and just go on with the rest of my day just feeling so good. But while I was standing there pumping the gas, I, this dialogue in my head started. And I thought I would share the dialogue with you to see if you can relate to it in any way, if you've ever had this happen before. And it kind of went something like this. I just did some amazing stuff for my health, and I feel great. It is so great to feel great. But a donut sounds great. And I love sweets, and I love to celebrate. So I want to get that donut because that running was sweet this morning. So I'm going to get that donut. But wait. I just did something really amazing for my health, and I feel great. Donuts taste great, but they don't make me feel great afterwards. It's not great to not feel great, and I don't want to not feel great. I want to keep feeling as great as I do now, and I want to celebrate that. And once I eat the donut, I don't think I'll feel as great, but I really want that donut now. I really do, but I really want to feel great. Does that conversation sound familiar to any of you guys? I struggled at the pump of pumping gas with that. I'm going to share a little bit more about what happened from that struggle and that pause for that dialogue in a little bit, but I'm going to throw it over to Anna now for some of her story. You were talking about that self-talk that you got into, that negative self-talk. Um, I had that same experience recently. I worked really hard with my coach, Liz Hilton, and... Um, lost 50 pounds and I got really healthy and I was really excited about that and I wanted to be able to stay healthy so I could work with other people and, and really support their health goals. Um, I weigh in every week with my husband on Thursday morning and what I found is over several months, every Thursday morning I would weigh and I had this little range, you know, on a piece of paper and every single week I was over that range by three to five pounds. So I was doing the kind of negative self-talk that you're describing um, where what you really, your fundamental goal really doesn't match up with your action steps. So I was saying, well, I live in a really cold place in Maine, so it's, it's okay if I weigh a little bit more, you know, it led because the winters are 10 months long here, right? I'm like a polar bear. I have to store up. Um, or I was just feeling down on myself. Like, what's, what's the matter with you that you can't drop the last five pounds? And then one day, I looked at my fundamental um, choice, my fundamental goal, which was optimal health. And I said, wait a minute, I'm in optimal health. You know, my, I, I exercise five days a week. I have a healthy BMI. Um, I have the energy to do the work that I want to do. Um, so I've set unrealistic, unrealistic action steps that don't match up with my fundamental goal. So I changed that goal and I changed the range up five pounds because I'm already there. Um, and I was beating myself up. It was a false automatic thought that was making me miserable and keeping me from really feeling as healthy and vibrant as I wanted to feel. That negative 
thinking can really get you in trouble, can it? Uh, it really can. Thank you, Anna. Both those stories are so, um, can't we all relate to those? Um, so Dr. A talks about in Chapter 4 of the Habits of Health, um, Dr. by Dr. Wayne Anderson, he talks about a hierarchy of choices. And that gives a lot of clarity to what it is. Sometimes when we look at just going on a diet, um, that's not enough motivation. So if we have a hierarchy of choices, the first one's a fundamental choice that um, Dr. Anna was talking about. It's what, it's our state of being. It's what we value. It's what's important to us. And it's where we stand. It's the difference between, um, Anna was saying, you know, I'm a healthy person versus, oh, I got to eat healthy. I remember a friend of mine when she had um, a baby and she seemed to lose her weight pretty quickly. And I go, wow, you look great. And she says, I want to be a thin mom. That's different than, oh, I got to get this baby weight off. So her way of being was wanting one of health, and that's what Anna just demonstrated. That's what Amy just demonstrated. Their way of being was being positive. They wanted to feel good. They wanted to be themselves. Um, and then um, primary choices are the goals and the behaviors that, that support our fundamental choice. So my friend that wanted to be a thin mom, she was going to make choices differently. Maybe, her fund, maybe one of her primary goals was a number on the scale. Maybe it wasn't. But we often get stuck in that, uh, the number on the scale without connecting it to what really matters, which is that fundamental way of being. And then the secondary choices, those are the simple action steps. They're the mundane things that we do every single day. And they are, in and of themselves, we may not want to do them but they get us to the outcome we want. And we, we sometimes focus, get stuck there on our action steps. But if we really think about it, we do it every single day for what's important to us. So I always like to say, do we, you know, if you have children, do you change poopy diapers? Do you like it? No, you don't like it, but you want a clean child. And so we do the laundry because we want clean clothes. If we get a degree, um, we, you know, go take exams that we don't want to take just because we want that outcome. So our secondary choices rather need to be in the context of this hierarchy of something that's more important. Can you share more about that with us, Amy? I'll unmute you. Can you unmute yourself? Okay, sorry, I lost the cursor there. Sorry. Yes, it's a lot of what Susan is saying um, really hit home with me in this gas station donut situation last week because what I found was when we are aware in the moment of what matters most, that awareness and that pause for that dialogue in ourselves can keep us connected to that fundamental choice so that we don't make a choice around the primary or secondary choices that detracts or distracts or takes away from all the hard work that we're trying to do. So I found that conversation to be such a struggle and it still ultimately was my choice, but by pausing and being aware of what really mattered, I was able to choose the long-term matter versus the short-term matter, but that doesn't always happen. And honestly, I told Susan, we met that Wednesday. I still wanted that donut at lunchtime. It was still on my mind because I do love sweets, but it wasn't what I really wanted. And sometimes I think we get so connected to the things outside of us that we lose a little bit of that connection to ourselves and what's really important. But when we pause and are intentional and are aware, we can have that dialogue in us and that might be enough to move us forward toward our health. So um, I appreciate the choices, the division of the choices, because I think that's so important. And when I was looking in the chat, a lot of people are talking about stop, challenge, and choose. And that's really what we're looking at is challenging ourselves to choose what we ultimately want. Thanks for that. I, you know, when you were talking about that internal dialogue, um, in the work that I do um, with cognitive behavioral therapy, that's called automatic thoughts. And so one of the things that happens is when we find out, uh, when we start to feel sort of discouraged or down on ourselves, or we're, are, we find that our secondary choices aren't supporting our primary choices and our fundamental desire to be healthy, then we need to pause and take uh, stock of what those automatic, not automatic thoughts are. So if I'm saying, well, it doesn't really matter if I eat the donut or it won't really matter if I go work out today. I worked out yesterday. I can work out again tomorrow. Um, I, I start to make 
say those things inside my head, and suddenly I find out that that, that thought is impacting my action, and that action is impacting my feeling. So if I want to change the action, I have to change the thought. So one of the things that I can do is I can start to write down, uh, I become mindful first, but I can start to write down what are those automatic thoughts that are going through my brain when I'm finding out that my action isn't lining up with my fundamental choice. And then if I want to change my action, it's really easy. All I need to do is change my thoughts. So instead of saying, it doesn't matter if I work out today, I can work out uh, tomorrow, I can say, I really want to be uh, prepared to be able to um, run a 5K in another six weeks. So I need to make the choice. I want to make the choice today to work out today so that five weeks from now I'm going to be ready for that. So that my um, action step lines up with my goal to run the 5K. And the 5K, which is a primary choice, lines up with my fundamental choice to be optimally healthy. Does that make sense? It's really simple. It's a really simple formula. Becoming aware of that internal dialogue and those um, uh, automatic thoughts that shape our actions. Great. That's wonderful, Anna. That's it's so well said and understood. So let's um, give our audience some tips. What are some things, practical things that we can do to move forward and to get ourselves prepared to make some of the healthy, you know, the choices that really matter to us? Amy, you want to start? Sure. So I think one of the tips is to use the art of questions within ourselves. And kind of like Anna was saying about changing our thoughts, one of the prompts that we can use to change our thoughts is to ask very, a very important question. It's very simple in words, but it's simply, does this serve me well? Does this choice that I'm considering serve me well? And we're going to do something in a little bit in a few minutes that kind of goes around that same line of thinking. But if our choice doesn't serve us well, why would we choose that when we deserve better? So again, it's that interconnection to serving ourselves well in every way. And then, of course, we know the better that we serve ourselves, the better we can serve those whom we love and care about. So a very simple question we can start with is, will this choice serve me well? And then we can move from there. I think another thing we can focus on is our strengths. How many times are we going along and we have two, three, four, five days of success and then something happens and we think, oh man, I just screwed up and now here comes sabotage. Here come those negative thoughts that Anna was mentioning. I think it's really important in those moments to remind ourselves of our strength and our successes because there is no successful person I know, maybe you guys know one, who has always had 100% success. But what they have had is the ability to stay the course by refocusing on their strengths and success. So I think those are two tips, asking ourselves, does this choice serve me well? And then focusing on our strengths and success so that we don't get bogged down if we do make a choice that doesn't serve us well. Beautiful, Amy. You know, another thing we can do is to create a community of support. So when I get to be around like-minded people like Anna and Amy, I'm immediately inspired to make choices that, you know, that, that I want to be like them too. So love um, creating community, you know, join your, um, your coach. There's lots of Facebook pages are Optavia. Become a coach yourself. There is nothing better than stepping into the role of helping someone else. You automatically make choices that are so much different than when you're sitting on the outside, you know, struggling. So um, another really cool tool that you can do that really has been helpful for making good choices and attack, connecting to our fundamental choice is a vision board. I have had clients, I had um, one client in particular, um, she was very successful businesswoman. In fact, she has an invention she's working on and um, very successful. And she put on her vision board to Time Magazine. She wants to be on the cover, a woman cover of Time Magazine. And so when she looked at herself like that, that was her fundamental choice to be a successful woman. It naturally empowered her choices that fit that vision of herself. 
Um, Anna? Thank you. These are such great ideas. I'm learning so much from both of you tonight. I really appreciate it and that so, so very much. Um, when, I, uh, when I'm working with um, um, making a choice, an action step, I talked a little earlier about automatic thoughts. And when we get stuck, um, we're, not, uh, we're not accomplishing our goals. Instead of focusing on beating ourselves up or what we think we're doing wrong or uh, why can't we do this, we get into sort of a shame-blame cycle. We feel ashamed of ourselves or we blame other people. Um, we have the power to change our lives. We have the power to um, accomplish optimal health and to sustain it. So one tip to do that is what I mentioned earlier, is to write down automatic thoughts and to replace a negative thought with a positive one. Instead of saying, I can't do this, um, if, if, I, if I eat a salad in front of my friends, they're going to uh, make fun of me or they're going to give me a hard time, so I'm just not going to do it this time. Say, you know, um, I really want to have a salad with my lunch because I love vegetables. It makes me feel good. And that doesn't say anything bad about anybody else's choices. It just claims the choice for myself. Um, one of the things that happens is when there are times when we sabotage our behavior because we have a competing fundamental choice to, to be safe. So, for example, um, if I go to dinner with my family, uh, my parents, and um, I've had a really bad childhood experience, um, maybe I only feel safe if I eat a lot of my mother's uh, mashed potatoes and gravy and fried chicken. Right? It makes me feel loved, makes me feel safe. Um, so I, I have to say that in my mind and replace that thought, that automatic thought with, I am whole and loved and beautiful and perfect just the way I am. And my mother is going to love me whether I eat those mashed potatoes or not. Um, she's really talking about herself. She's not talking about me. And I'm going to eat every vegetable in the house. And when I eat every vegetable in the house, she'll start making vegetables for me because she loves me, right? So we have to claim our health for ourselves in a very positive way through those automatic uh, choices. Sometimes we get really stuck, though. We feel scared. Uh, we're afraid if we make a positive choice, we won't be loved. Um, our family will reject us. Our friends won't want to hang out with us. And when we start to feel really scared or really sad uh, or really mad, then sometimes we have to work with a therapist uh, along with our health coach to try to unpack what that's about if we're consistently sabotaging our, our, um, our fundamental choices. Because fundamentally, uh, optimal health is available for everybody. Love we can it. have what we want. Yeah, we can have what we want. Love that. Love it. And, you know, practicing the habits of health, what happened with me when I started the program is when you, we eat, in a way, the habits of health, eating five to six times a day, getting the rest we need, hydrating, um, having purpose and meaning in our lives, all of those things give us the momentary um, – ability to pause to what Amy had talked about and choose something healthy. When we're tired, we haven't eaten all day, when we're stressed, we lose our freedom to choose. So by taking care of ourselves and nourishing ourselves, we really can make, put ourselves uh, in a better position to make those choices that matter most to us. And then finally, what I really want to share is just these little to honor, celebrate, appreciate these little choices. You know, I'm so glad I got to hear Amy's donut story because all along we got to celebrate her, you know, for the mile run. She might not have told anybody she did a mile run. And it was just so cool to um, celebrate her um, donut, you know, not eating donut. And just every little choice you make, please honor yourself and not just focus on the beating yourself up for that, you know, that one choice that really sets you back. So make those little small choices. And so I would like to, Amy is going to take us through a. So I stopped that there because she's going to do a breathing exercise. And I don't think we need to do a breathing exercise with her. Uh, our time is precious. And uh, we'll move on to our moment that we share. Did, uh, is everybody unmuted now? Now I am. I see Marsh. Tony, I'm mute. 
More, okay, everybody's unmuted. That's good. So okay. while this was, did, did anybody have a hard time with hearing her sometimes? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I could still hear her. I love this because when we've been at convention, Dr. A has had things mess up. So we all think it only happens to us when we're doing things, but it actually happens in the middle of a big convention. Isn't that right? So, so it's not just us. Um, the, uh, let's see where I want to go with this. I went and got my little structural tension chart. And um, I'll go ahead and do first. In that book, that's where I got my I will, I won't, I want. That actually became my goal slash vision. The, the optimal health is what I put as the goal vision, goal and vision. But uh, what I want to have really accomplish, and that's where I put the I will, I won't, and I want. And uh, I've been at this for a long time. And so my will is I will complete my weight loss journey. I will complete my weight loss journey. And my won't is I won't compromise. My want uh, when the blonde headed lady was talking there and she said about her and her husband, way once a week i don't share my weight with tony even when we're in a doctor's office i don't share my weight with tony i don't want this to be about my weight that would become a burden on my back i am so protective of that i don't want to be a number on a scale and so my want is to weigh in every week with tony so i have to get to where i need to be so that i would enjoy doing that so that's my will i won't and i want uh, my takeaway was so many things, and I got the benefit of listening to this twice. I love the art of the question. I already used the one about does this serve me well, and I have internalized that I do deserve better, but I also know that it's not going to happen unless I do it. I do know that. I would like Lisa when she's talking, because I know she has used therapists in her life, and uh, I would like to know what the benefit there is when she was saying not only use your health coach, but to use a therapist. And Dorothy, when she talked about the mashed potatoes and her mother, I thought about you. <laughs> and your piece of cake Chocolate. with your mother. Chocolate, yeah. Yeah. And uh, vision boards. I have done two vision boards. I had. Huh? Oh, that was Marsha. Uh, Sorry. That's okay. Uh, we're family here. The, um, uh, the vision boards, the first time I did a vision board, it was a goal board. And the second time I did, did a vision board, I did it on values. I wanted to remind myself of what actually mattered to me in terms of what my values and my principles were. But if you haven't done a vision board, I, I really strongly suggest it. And the ants that Dorothy did, she did a, one of her teachable moments was on the automatic negative thoughts. And I mean, that just fits right into this whole process. The, uh, the secondary choices that I put down on my structural tension chart was to eat the six small meals a day, drink the 80 to 100 ounces of water, exercise, sleep the seven plus hours, stay positive. I love meditating and I wanna make sure I do that daily. And then that breathing exercise she threw in at the end, uh, doing uh, breaths on a daily basis, that's, that's what keeps you alive. Without breath, you're dead. And so obviously, if you practice that inhaling and exhaling and do it deliberately, you are going to add quality of life to your years. And so I'm going to pass this to Bird Mom. Ooh, okay. I guess what I took away from that is really that everything – revolves around the choice you make mm. and it's so true because you know if you don't make the right choices uh things aren't going to go the way you want and you're not going to be healthy so i that's really the biggest thing i took away from that very good and um i think similar to you uh i will complete my weight loss and i will not i won't gain it back Good. And I'm, I'm really adamant about that this time. And I want to stay healthy for as long as I can. And what I'm most grateful for today is that I, I really 
when I look at it, I, I really have a nice life. There's nothing I can complain about. So I, I am grateful for that. Awesome. And that's it. Uh, okay. And um, let's see. I'd like to pass it to Tony. He's got to be. He's muted. <laughs> Tony. There he goes. Okay. I can't hear him. Can you hear him? No. Tony, we can't hear you. Oh, okay. No. Won't you just unplug and use your computer speaker? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear yeah. you. So go ahead. Yeah. Now you can hear me. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, what what I got from the missing uh, again, the choices we make in life and food or in anything we do is going to determine how we're going to end up at the end. So yes. you have to concentrate on choices. You can't just make a choice without you know looking at all the things, all the possibilities when you make a choice. Because once you make it, you're stuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I will watch what I do and say in regards to my weight and my uh, exercises. I won't make excuses about, you know, not going to the gym. <laughs> oh, okay. I want to get better at doing the gym. I, I need to go every day and I need to get better. What I'm most grateful today, I'm grateful that I'm here. <laughs> I the job that I started two days ago. So, yeah. And what do I want to share most today? I don't know. I haven't shared much. I don't have nothing to share. Well, then send it to somebody. Okay. Uh, Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> there you are. So I, I agree with everybody else that what my takeaway from this was how important your choices are. But on top of that, I felt really good listening and comparing choices from four years ago, a year ago, to choices that are automatic now. Um, there's always room for improvement. But I feel like I've made great strides in adopting a healthy lifestyle in choices that not long ago would have forced me to stop challenge chews, maybe have some ants. That doesn't occur so much anymore because in my brain, it's just not something to do because I want to be healthy and have less pain and be able to enjoy my, so many things that are ahead of me. So. It sounds like the, those two questions, does this serve me well? It sounds to me like that really is what you're talking about. You got rid of the things that didn't serve you well. Absolutely. And you figured out you deserved better. Boy, those two Absolutely. questions really fit you. Absolutely. Um, and again, I will not only reach my goal weight, I will maintain it. Done with the going up. 50 pounds going back down done um, I won't quit and what I want is pretty simple I want my health improved to decrease my pain which will allow me to do so much more of the things I want to do and what I am most grateful for today I can't pick one thing so I'm just gonna say Everything, the improvement in my life, the improvement in my health, uh, totally different lifestyle, friends, activities. Just, I, I, am, I am so blessed, probably more blessed than I've ever been in my life. And what I want to share most today is a simple thing, but while I was in rod aerobics today, occasionally a bald eagle will fly over, but today in particular, it came directly over the pool and it kind of swerved back and forth over the pool. So we were able to take a real leisurely, majestic view of this beautiful bald eagle. And I just was sitting there thinking, how amazing is this? It's 80 some degrees. I'm exercising. 
and there's a bald eagle over my head. Wow. So, and I'm going to pass to Miss Dorothy. Oh boy. Um, I will get my exercise by going out and doing things in my yard that need to be done badly. Um, I won't swear while I'm doing it. <laughs> I want to get more exercise and I want to get smaller. Um, what I'm most grateful for today is I took my mom to the doctors and she had a spell and they were saying everything is okay. I'm grateful for that. Um, what do I want to share today? Hmm. I guess I don't have anything to share today. That it was 80 degrees <laughs> today and fabulous? No, that's true. It was 80 and fabulous. I'm telling you. That's what makes me know I have to go out and work in my yard. <laughs> and what was your takeaway today, Dorothy? My takeaway was, uh, like the girl who goes to the store where they sell donuts, <laughs> you, you pick and choose what store you go to. <laughs> and you pick and choose in the grocery store. That's where I make my choices, in the grocery store. But there, yeah. are, there is a store I won't go to either because there's too much junk stuff in there. So I'm gonna go back on go back on the grateful thing because while I mentioned that choices I used to struggle with are no longer a struggle. So, but I am grateful that there is not a Krispy Kreme donut place that's conveniently located <laughs> for me. It's like way out of the way, and I'm also grateful that there's Dunkin' Donuts on all the corners because I do not do I don't don't do donuts. Period. But that would probably be when she was talking about the donut. That if if I passed a Krispy Kreme on a regular basis, that would be a struggle. Or a Waffle House. Waffle House is a travel treat. Oh, okay. I'm glad you got your uh, things uh, separated there. Compartmentalized. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, uh, let's see. I have a message here. Got to go. Having a hard time staying awake. Sorry. That's from Marsha. Okay, Marsha. I wondered. Uh, I was going to call as soon as I got off, but I think I'll let her be so she can go on and rest. I'm in touch with her every day, many times every day, so no one needs to worry about it. I'll let anybody know if there's anything that uh, uh, happens that uh, y'all would be interested in. So far, she's doing great, and Dick is improving, and he's, she, he is in the right place, just like she said. So I'm going to stop the recording now.